Now, Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Welcome to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. Glad to have you with us this week. Later on in the show, we're going to hear about Get Started Rhode Island, a uh, business plan competition that Cox Business is putting on. And uh, I'm actually one of the judges, so we're going to hear about what they're looking for. And uh, if you want to come by, you can hear more about that. But right now, very pleased to be joined by the president of Squad Locker, Todd Grant. Squad, uh, Squad. Todd, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks, Ted. When you Glad rhyme, it, it catches me off, off face there. So right behind us here, we have some examples of your product. Products and people are going to find out more about that. Uh, it's not just Moses Brown. That's our example no, today. All schools, all teams, all leagues. Yeah, so uh, give people the basic thumbnail sketch. What do you do at Squad Locker? Uh, at Squad Locker, we've launched uh, a new and improved online experience that allows anyone affiliated with a team, a coach, a youth league organizer, a parent volunteer that's been burdened with the apparel responsibility to use an easy workflow to coordinate and organize and manage the team's apparel requirements. So, um, do you do, uh, you kind of were alluding to this, do you do all sports, all levels, you know, who's your, who's your target on this? The target are youth athletes throughout the United States. There's 50 million youth athletes and depending on average team count, it's, it's four to five million teams uh, throughout the country that we're trying to serve between youth athletes age six and eight up to division two and division three colleges that still buy their team gear. Now, I have to think historically this is you know, I think of like going down to the, the local sporting goods store or my, you know, my, not, I wasn't a great little leader to begin with, but I know my, my dad and other coaches would go down and kind of order it on the fly. I mean, is this sort of a business that it's sort of still in the 20th century? You're trying to get to the 21st? Yeah, it is a, it is an industry space that's, that's stuck in the old economy a little bit. And it's, it's a, a business landscape that's controlled by 14 or 15,000 corner store independent operators. Um, they do great work for their for their local community, but they've lagged behind a little bit from the standpoint of technology innovation. Uh, and our business um, is an interesting hybrid. We we have an old economy and a new economy element to the business. Our old economy element is that we still have craftspeople in the business who are responsible for decorating the decorated team apparel. So it's silk screening and embroidery and heat applied graphics and and direct to garment printing. Uh, but the new economy part of the business is that we've launched an innovative online experience, as I, as I mentioned, just to make it easier so the parents and the coaches don't have to go to the corner store guy. They can have a more of an Amazon-like experience online. And people like, uh, like that ease of doing it in their pajamas at home uh, on their laptop. So you were founded by Gary Goldberg, a uh, local entrepreneur. He's had a couple of different companies, actually, but I know he's a Rhode Islander. Um, what sort of, what inspired him? What, what was he doing that he said, he said, wait a minute, someone needs to, there's a missing link here I want to create. Yeah, interesting story. Uh, Gary is a successful Rhode Island entrepreneur with several business interests in a in a series of companies focused on apparel and uh, innovative tex textile products. Um, he has had and ran a company called Turfer Athletic for over 10 years, and Turfer was selling a line of performance outerwear to teams, leagues, and schools throughout the United States. Um, and Gary saw what was happening with the growth of Under Armour and their great brand, 20% growth quarter over quarter. Um, he saw that the market dynamic was somewhat stagnant re regarding technology innovation. Um, and he also saw that, saw that there was a growing industry referred to as league management software companies where any young athlete that registers to be part of a youth league gets registered through this online platform and the platform communicates with parents about scheduling updates and registrations. So he felt that if he aligned with Under Armour, a great brand, put in place a, a, an up-to-date, uh, best-in-class manufacturing facility which exists here in Warwick, Rhode Island, and aligned uh, our company in partnership with these league management software companies that we could we could take on uh, this industry and do do things better and differently than the corner store operators. It sounds almost when you put it like that like a, a little bit of a no-brainer. Like everything's gone in the web. Why shouldn't this too? So is there is there a lot of competition or a lot of people doing this in this space right now? There's a few technology companies that are doing a similar thing, but it's with generic brands in the category of spirit wear. Um, we've decided to focus directly on the athlete and the gear that the athletes need to participate in the sport. So it's, it's, it's brands like Under Armour and Nike and Adidas and Champion and Russell and dozens of others that the athletes are demanding. Um, and so in that we're focused on team sales, we're targeting the coach with our new online experience to set up these 
easy to, easy to access sites so that parents can order the gear for their young son and daughter athletes directly. And that's one, uh, one thing about it you guys I know have said repeatedly is uh, any parent who's been involved, they can imagine uh, you, you try to get everyone's size down, you try to run around and collect the checks from everybody to get this done, but you actually have, they kind of hand it off to the parents of the children who need the, uh, or young people who need the, the gear, right? Right, so the way that it works is uh, the market problem that we're trying to resolve is the, the coach volunteers and the parent volunteers who, on, or, who are on the boards of youth leagues have volunteered their time to help and inspire and mentor young athletes. And the last thing they really want to be doing is dealing with the cumbersome challenge of, of dealing with apparel. Um, so we tried to make it easy for them with an online workflow that allows them to identify their team, identify the gender and age level of the, of the participants on the team, and then the magic in the software is that it, it custom selects the appropriate apparel and gear that's, that's perfect for that team profile based, based on team need, uh, best sellers, uh, most preferred options for that particular team profile. And then the software actually promotes a, a pop-up store, uh, an online shopping experience to the parents so that the coaches don't have to fill out order forms or collect checks or deal with, deal with customer service issues that pop up. Now, how are you, uh, do you have a, a squad of salesmen trolling the Little League fields to try to convince people to switch for next year? Or do you, how are you getting the word out to people? Because people, people have been doing it the old way a long, long time. You have to convince them to think differently about how they're going to acquire this. Yeah, and in, in leading up to uh, raising the A round, we, um, we did do some digital marketing tests nationally, and we were able to prove that we could acquire customers from all over the country using digital marketing best practices. Uh, we on onboarded several hundred customers um, through that experience, and that was really in a test environment of doing a lot of things manually, internally in our business. And so the validation for the investors that came into the business was if you launched a more automated, more frictionless online uh, piece of software and a, and a, and a web experience, could the business uh, create an environment for scalability and, and fast growth? All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Todd Grant from Squad Locker about some uh, new investments they've just received. And later on, we'll hear about a business plan competition coming up here in Rhode Island. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. Later on in the show, we're going to hear about Cox Business's Get Started RI Business Plan Competition, which is coming up later on in uh, this month, September. But right now, we're going to continue the conversation with Todd Grant. He's the president of Squad Locker, which is uh, they're an online athletic apparel company. They, they put things together for teams and uh, groups like that. And you actually see some examples here. We're looking at a Moses Brown, your alma mater, I believe. It is. And we have a, Proud a of sweatshirt that. here. And uh, is Moses Brown a customer? They are. They're a good customer customers ours, of ours and we set up online stores for them based on uh, each of their teams and uh, the coaches can select the, the items that are appropriate for that particular team and then that online environment is made available to parents so that they can purchase, purchase gear for, the, for the, their son and daughter athletes. Nice looking shirts. So um, you recently closed on a new round of seed equity funding, uh, about uh, $1.75 million so far. You're looking to get it to 2.25, so if any investor's watching, he'll, he'll be glad to take your call if you want to put a half million in. Um, this was led by George Overholzer of Third Sector Capital Partners in Boston. So uh, obviously always young companies glad to get that kind of investment. Do you have specific plans for this new capital? What are you going to do with it? We do. Um, first off, regarding the investors, we're thrilled to have uh, George Over Overholzer having led the, the round. Um, he comes to us after um, investing as an early investor in Vistaprint, uh, and he was a board member there for 11 years. Uh, we have other local investors, uh, including Slater Technology Fund. Um, and joining the board will be George, um, another a uh, private investor named Jim Lombardi, and Gary will be, become the board of directors for the company. Um, primary use of proceeds is to build the software. Uh, we're trying to keep the money in Rhode Island. Uh, we've hired a software development company in Providence called Mojo Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, we launched the first release of the software in early August, and we're now getting users to experience it and collecting a lot of feedback. Uh, we've hired a chief technology officer named Keith Roberts, He'll be adding uh, to his team uh, a staff of programmers to, to onboard that into our internal operation. Um, and then lastly, we're going to spend a significant amount of that money on digital marketing efforts to grow the revenues of the business and get more people using the new 
online experience. So you guys, you kind of have, you have to have a foot in, in uh, the old world, for lack of a better term, in the new world, because you have, you have to have your manufacturing process to get the shirts and things done, but you also need a good, you know, you have customers used to Amazon, which they have a lot of resources at Amazon to build up the software. You need good software that, that appeals to the same kind of folks. Right. The secret sauce of the software is that it's going to allow us to very efficiently onboard new customers using digital marketing to, to acquire them. Uh, we'll establish some cost of customer acquisition and conversion metrics through those marketing funnels, but there still needs to be very uh, traditional elements of the business functionally. We have an accounting team and a finance team and a marketing team and a production staff, customer service. Uh, we need to manage all the customers that we onboard and make th sure their orders are, um, they, they follow the, uh, the execution seamlessly. Um, and the decorating uh, and production team, the crafts people in the business, don't go away. Uh, we continue to decorate the gear that we, we buy blank goods from Under Armour and, and the other brands. How did um, Slater, Slater's of course the state chartered venture fund, we've had them on the show actually, how did they get involved in this? I reached out to Thorne Sparkman. Um, he was interested in, in the business. I had known him from some previous dealings and other uh, equity funded business I was involved with. Um, and he was interested in the technology innovation that we were, we were bringing to a stagnant market. Um, he was interested that we were resolving something that was really cumbersome for the con consumer and making it easier for them. Um, and the market was large. The, uh, the decorated apparel market for teams is $8 billion in the U.S., and it's controlled by those thousands of, of corner store operators, as I mentioned. It's, it's hyper-local and intensely fragmented, so he felt like we could, uh, we could acquire uh, a significant revenue growth from just making it easier for those consumers. Another thing interesting about you guys, we're always hearing about Rhode Island companies leaving or potentially leaving for Massachusetts or somewhere else, but uh, Gary Goldberg, your founder we were talking about earlier, he actually moved his manufacturing operation to Rhode Island a few years ago as part of uh, the creation of Squad Locker. Why did he decide to come to Rhode Island rather than you know, move back to Mass? Uh, Gary's a Rhode Islander. He's had uh, several businesses, successful businesses in Rhode Island. He lives in Barrington. Uh, the founding management team of the company, uh, Frank Tillinghouse, CFO, myself, are Rhode Islanders. Uh, Gary decided to invest uh, in Rhode Island, and so he moved the manufacturing operation from Massachusetts to Warwick. He purchased, personally purchased a 40,000 square foot facility that the business now operates, operates in. Um, and we've been very selective about um, aligning with investors from Rhode Island and spending our money back uh, with Rhode Island. I mentioned Mojo Tech. We've also hired two marketing firms in Providence, Figments and Working Planet, to help us with our website and our marketing funnel and, and search advertising, respectively. We're always hearing about the round business climate. Can it be made better? How is it for entrepreneurs? You're an entrepreneur who's been building a business in Round. How has the experience been here? Uh, I'm not going to be. Um, I'm not going to be hard on Rhode Island. I think um, in order to be a successful business, you have to show value to 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 your market. Um, you have to prove that and, and validate it to get the market to respond. Um, and we found no lack of support in Rhode Island. We've closed on our equity round. Uh, we've had the support of Slater Technology. We have a great employee base that that lives in and around Rhode Island. Uh, we have vendors that support us in Rhode Island, so we're, we're off and running in, in Rhode Island. And uh, Lord, running out of time, but last question. So looking ahead, uh, how are you looking at Do you think you're going to be adding jobs? Yeah, probably 15 to 20 jobs in the course of, of the next 15 to 18 months. Um, I would think that by the end of 2016, we're, we're up from 30 employees now to somewhere in the mid-40s range. All right, we'll be keeping an eye on it and getting our uh, team sweatshirts and everything out of Squad Locker going forward. Todd Grant, thank you so much for being here. Don't go away, though, because coming up next, we'll be talking to Ross Nelson from Cox Business about the Get Started RI competition. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted BC, and we're talking now with Ross Nelson. He's the Vice President of Cox Business, an arm, of course, of Cox Communications. Ross, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Fellow Attleboro uh, native. I know you live up there where I'm from. That's so right. Good to see you. Um, so I wanted to have you on today partly to talk about an event that I'll be joining you for. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be pretty fun. It's called Get Started RI. It's coming up Thursday, September 24th. But uh, rather than me talk all through, why don't you tell the folks, what, what is this event we're doing? Well, Get Started Rhode Island is a... It's a Shark Tank-like business pitch competition. It's presented with Inc. Magazine along with Cox Business. It's our third annual event that we've had. And it's, uh, we've selected six uh, contestants to, to pitch their businesses. We had a couple of dozen that we had to uh, go through to get down to a really good, diverse group. 
and then they're going to present to a panel of uh, four judges, and the judges will determine who wins and who wins the uh, the prize money. So uh, we're looking forward to an exciting time. Based on the first two years, it, uh, we had great turnout, so uh, we're looking forward to it. So you have the six. The six have been chosen. The finalists are going to present. A quick thumbnail sketch. Who are we looking at? All right, so we've got a very diverse group. We've got a company called CBC, which is uh, in wind energy, right? They do uh, small turbines, which can go on the top of businesses. And they, as they claim, it's plain, uh, hidden in plain sight, right? So they sell wind as a service. So that's one company. We have a company called Delish Skin, very different company. Uh, the woman who started this company uh, was a cook, loved cooking for years, went to school, got her undergrad in chemistry, and now has created the chemistry of beauty. She makes healthcare products out of food. So they're non-toxic and they're good for the environment. Uh, another one is a little more of a concept right now. It's a company called Move In. And what they do is they work with college students. At the end of the year, you've got all the furniture that comes out and the students don't know what to do with it. So they buy it back from the students, they refresh it, they refurbish it, and they get it ready for the next incoming uh, students, and they sell it to the students or other uh, young folks that are looking to move into apartments. Um, Ocean, State, uh, Ocean State Smoked Fish is right in Warren with uh, Hope in Maine, and they source local seafood, and they have a really interesting three-day process where they, they brine it, they dry it, they smoke it, and that company's been doing very well so far, so we're looking forward to hearing from them. And then Primal DM is a behavioral marketing company. And what their motto is, they want you to not invest more, but invest better. So how do you get to know your customers better than understanding how they buy, when they buy, and they can gear their message to that. And the last company we have is ExactSense, completely different than the others. This is a drone-based company. So they make drones, and really what they do is 3D mapping. So uh, where they can do a 3D map of an area within a couple of hours, where and before it would take days to do that. In fact, their technology, their drones were used in Nepal during a recent tragedy that they had out there. So it's a diverse group. I was just going to say, that's an interesting, I right. actually, I, hadn't, I didn't know exactly who we had till now. Right. So that's a diverse group. Now what, uh, there's, you mentioned a couple of judges. I know I'm one of them. Who are the right. other judges and what? What, are, what is our mission? What are we looking for in these? Uh, give, me, give me my own briefing. What, are, right. what am I looking for in these so places? So I, I think what you're looking for is a company that's ready to take the next step. Somebody who's got a business plan that they can uh, bring to action and that can really make an impact locally, right? You have some companies that are already started and some are concepts, but that, it doesn't really matter. It's really who's who's ready to invest in and can make that next step and, and grow as a company. You got me, who else is judging? So we got, uh, as equally diverse as the, the contestants, we have a diverse panel. So we've got you, and thank you for joining us. We've got Kim Anderson from Ava Anderson Non-Toxic. Uh, Kim brings over 25 years of experience in business. She has worked for large companies like Macy's, so she brings the retail side. She's also been an entrepreneur and started her own businesses. She's a community activist. So I think she'll add a lot of value to the, uh, to the panel. And then we've got Steve Diossi, a former NFL linebacker who uh, has been an entrepreneur and started his own business and, as you know, owns Fred and Steve's Steakhouse. So the value he brings is in sports you have dedication, commitment, and competitiveness, which you also need to be as an entrepreneur. So I think he'll bring that, that value to it. And then we brought in uh, Inc. Magazine's editor, James Ledbetter. So it, it, not only is he the editor of Inc. Magazine, He's a, a contributing editor to Reuters. He's been with CNN Money, Time Magazine. Very smart guy. And he's the author of five books on business, so I think he'll, he'll add to it. And all of that will be moderated by Ken Kraft. Ken Kraft is our vice president of marketing at Cox Business nationally, and he's got years of experience marketing to small uh, businesses. So it's going to be an entertaining night. I think the panelists, uh, the judges will add a lot of value and ask a lot of good questions of the, uh, the contestants, so it should be fun. So um, uh, I want to give you time to talk about what else is going on at Cox Business, but last question on the event, which is it kind of sounds like a big party. Who can go? Can they register? How, how can people show up if they want to come? So registration to, for the pitching companies is obviously closed. Uh, but registration uh, for visitors is open. It's at Cox Business, uh, so, excuse me, it's at coxblue.com slash getstartedri. We ask you to just go online and register. Uh, we're expecting 250 to 300 people. It's a free event. Uh, it should be a great networking time. It's at 5 o'clock. Starts at 5. At Harbor Lights, right? At Harbor Lights in uh, Warwick Neck on uh, September 24th. So it's 5 o'clock to 6.30 is networking. 6.30 to 8 is the actual event. 
and then we'll follow that up with a little dessert and uh, networking after uh, until about 8.30. Should be interesting. So uh, it's all, of course, sponsored by your company, Cox Business. Uh, you guys have a couple things going on. I know you're pretty high on. What are you, what's big over at Cox Business these days? So there's two things we're working on. One is um, the digital divide. We're trying to bring internet to more people and, and help educate the, uh, the uh, general folks. And we partnered with a national nonprofit called Connect to Compete. And what Connect to Compete does is they work with other MSOs like us, other cable companies, and any family that's on free lunch program, reduced lunch program, or the SNAP program is eligible for broadband internet for $9.95 a month. So we're trying to bring internet to these families. In Rhode Island, we're really lucky. 99% of the residents in Rhode Island have access to 25 meg or more download speeds. Yeah, we're always top of those lists. Of we speed are absolutely having, yeah. at the top of the list. So the question now is, is how do we get them to adopt it? So we work with the boys and girls clubs, we work with the schools and the superintendents, uh, and we're hoping that if we can help educate the kids, they can bring it back home and help educate the parents on, on the relevance of the internet, and then we can combine it with a low cost. So it, it's a very effective program right now. And then number two, you had two you wanted to mention. So we have uh, Cox Business Security. Uh, that's a new product for us. We've rolled it out this year, and it's premise-based security. So uh, it's the door, the door monitors, the window monitors, the cameras in your business, and we've rolled that out. It's a natural extension of what we do today. Today we, we put a device, a cable modem in your business, and we monitor it. Now we put a camera or uh, a detection device in your business and give you the ability to monitor it. We don't, we don't monitor your network. Uh, I mean, look at your cameras. Uh, but it gives the business owner really good insight into their business. So picture a, a bar, right? The, the business owner can see that the bar, if they're busy, they keep staff on. If they're slow, maybe they send a bartender home. Uh, so it's a productivity tool. It's also security. So it's, uh, it's been going very well so far. Uh, in fact, um, Rhode Island was the pilot nationally for this. So across the country, uh, Rhode Island was the first location that we rolled this out. Uh, and then it's been so well received that we're now rolling it out in Connecticut, in our other market, and also rolling it out nationwide. So there's good things happening in Rhode Island. We're, uh, we're a test bed. And I want you to, uh, we only about uh, 30, 40 seconds left, so I want you to switch hats to your chairman of the Northern yep. Rhode Island Chamber of Commerce. Uh, what's the feel in Northern Rhode Island right now? How are people feeling about business climate this year, business conditions, and, and looking into next year? Yeah. Well, it seems optimistic right now. Um, it started in the beginning of the year with our annual dinner, which was the most attended dinner that we've had in years. Um, the politicians that came are enthusiastic. They're positive. Um, we've had a lot of guest speakers this year. We've had the governor, the speaker, the Senate president. We've had uh, the Secretary of Commerce come out. And it's one consistent message. It's positive. It's pro-business. It's let's drive the economy. And I think that's carried through. So the feedback that we're getting is, is positive. It's we're adding jobs. We're maybe looking to expand. And, and that's very refreshing to hear. All right. Well, hopefully it'll continue. You'll, you'll come on next year say it's better and better. But all Absolutely. right. So get started. All right. Remind people the date. September 24th. Okay, and you can register online, and we'll see Shark Tank. Get my uh, get my uh, fins ready or something That's like right. that. All right, thank you, Ross thank Nelson you. from Cox Business, and thank you for joining us this week and every week on Executive Suite. Remember, you can catch us now as a podcast, too, on iTunes. See you back here next week.